Hi, it's near the end of December so I thought this would be a good time to review the shoes that made my running rotation in 2020. We'll go more or less from fastest to slowest so we'll start off with the Saucony Type A8. As you can see I have elastic laces on these at the moment. These are my triathlon and duathlon short course racing shoes. They have a low stack so great ground feel. They're quite low ramp but they're the lightest shoe I own in a size 11.5 US. They're under 200 grams. They're also very easy to get on and off. They fit my foot great even with no socks don't get blisters and I just feel fast and of course they look fast as well everybody knows red's the fastest color the next shoe is very similar same brand this is the Saucony fast twitch it's a racing flat like the type a8 it just has a little bit more stack a little bit more protection it's going to work on the runs a little bit longer I've got normal laces on these and these would be what I use when I do track workouts. So it still has that really good ground feel, very good for working on running technique. That brings us to my current favorite pair of runners, the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. You can see a lot more stack height. It's got a lot more cushioning, although it's still quite a firm shoe. It's a little bit heavier than the racing flats but still a very light shoe and it has a nylon plate which not the carbon plate super shoes but still gives you quite a good rebound and you'll see I've got these with elastic laces these will be my race shoes for Olympic distance triathlons and half Ironman triathlons I'd also use these if I was running a half marathon and if I ever did a marathon, at the moment, I'd probably go to these shoes as well. When not racing, I would use these for tempo efforts and threshold efforts. So I can use them and I have used them on the track, but I think these are probably better suited to just that slight pace off the track. So the, the fast, longer intervals. I love these shoes, not only because they're very fast, but they're lightweight and extremely comfortable. I find that booty construction just works really well for me. In the future if I lash out and buy one of the carbon plated super shoes they will probably take over race duties but I would definitely still keep this for those threshold efforts and tempo efforts. This is the Hoka One One Rincon. This is version 1. Version 2 has come out but it actually had very minimal changes. This is a much loved shoe by so many reviewers on the internet. I think it's Hoka's best road running shoe. It's a very versatile shoe. You could do races, track workouts. You could do long runs in it with the massive cushioning it has. For me, I use this for threshold efforts and tempo efforts on the harder surfaces, or if it's gonna be a longer tempo or threshold effort just the extra cushioning means I'm going to pull up really well. At home I have lots of great trails available to me but if I run at lunchtime from work they're typically much harder surfaces and that's specifically what I bought this shoe for. Running on the harder surfaces just the protection there but still a really fast shoe. I've done nearly 300 kilometers on these it's holding up pretty well most of that wear and tear happened in the first 50 kilometers and then it pretty much stayed the same since then there's no real creasing on the midsole some reviewers have found that it falls off the cliff around this point i haven't experienced that yet maybe i will but i would expect at least another 200 kilometers out of these shoes now despite the fact that i have raved about how good they are I'm actually not planning to buy these again. Instead, Hoka have come out with a new shoe called the Mark IV. The Mark III wasn't that good, but everybody is raving about the Mark IV. 
and think it's actually a better version of the Rincon. Unfortunately, that won't be out until about February, but I've still got a few hundred kilometers left on this, so plenty of time. That leads me into my second pair of Hokus. These are the Clifton 6. Again, the Clifton 7 has already come out. It has a slightly different upper with a different heel shape, but the midsole is more or less the same. This is a slightly heavier, slightly more cushioned version of the Rincon, if you like. So still on the lighter side, probably wouldn't do 10k or 5k races in this, although I could certainly see people doing a marathon in this and the cushioning would be great for the longer distances. I bought this primarily for long runs and runs on the harder surfaces. Like the Rincon, I love this shoe but not planning to buy it again. New Balance have a shoe called the 1080, version 11 of that will be out in February and the reason I'm leaning more towards that shoe is simply because New Balance shoes tend to fit my foot far better than the Hoka. The Hoka tend to have a thinner toe box and they're not as snug through the ankle and midfoot. But if the New Balance 1080 doesn't turn out as well as I expect, I'll be back to the Clifton. Speaking of New Balance, this is the New Balance Fresh Foam Beacon version 2. Version 3 is out, but it's fairly similar. There may or may not be a slight upgrade to the midsole. One of my favorite shoes. Without doubt, the most comfortable shoe I've ever owned. And one of the main reasons why I'm looking at the New Balance 1080 over the Clifton. When I did my review of this shoe, I wasn't sure whether I would buy it again, but now it's a definite buy. I've done nearly 400 kilometers in these shoes and they're really my go-to runner. If there's any soreness in my feet, if I just feel like a comfy run, these are great. They can run anything, they're very versatile. I found the weakness of them is that they didn't have a lot of energy return, but that's really not everything. Sometimes just having a really comfortable run is great. And these are the kind of shoes that make you look forward to going for a run. So these are the Beacon version two, the version three are definitely on my buy list. That leads me to the last pair of road running shoes in my rotation. These are the Essex Glide Ride version one. Version two has come out. I think they're actually heavier, which was my main complaint about these shoes, the weight. They are the heaviest road running shoes that I have but they are very good for long runs or even aerobic runs as long as you're on a hard surface I didn't find they worked that well on the trails although they're quite heavy they're very comfortable they have a decent sized toe box and you do get quite a bit of energy return with that distinct rocker going forward these would be the type of shoes I would leave at work to do those lunchtime runs where trails are not usually available. That leads me into the trail runners. This is the Saucony Mad River TR. It's sort of a crossover shoe. So you can do road running and trail running on this. It has really good grip I found on the mildly technical trails. It's on the heavier side, the same weight as the glide ride, but again, really comfortable. It doesn't excel in any area it's sort of more of an all-rounder it's kind of good at everything without being great at anything i've enjoyed running in these but still undecided about whether i'll buy them again my latest purchase was the hoka one one speed goat 4. i'll do a full review on these shoes once i get them to 100 kilometers so far, I absolutely love them. They aren't great in everything, so you can't have that much cushioning and have the amount of ground feel I normally like, but I think this is a great compromise. And they are so comfy, and they're actually my favorite pair of shoes from Hoka. 
and at the moment they are a definite buy again. These are the Innovate TerraClaw 220. Innovate have a number at the end of each shoe designating the weight. It's probably around a size 9.5 of 220 grams. In my 11.5 US, they're a little bit heavier, but still a reasonably lightweight shoe, especially for a trail runner. They've got quite a low stack height, but great ground feel. So when fast ascending, I find these are great. The tread isn't really that deep, probably worn down, they've done nearly 200 kilometers now, but I still find they have really good grip and the large gap between the tread means that the mud doesn't get stuck in there, it falls off. So you maintain that tread for the whole race. With all the trail running races being canceled in 2020, I'm not sure if I actually ended up running in this shoe this year, but it's definitely one of my favorites. Although it's a few years old now, so I don't know what the current model of this is like, so I really don't know if I would replace same for same. So they were the 10 shoes in my current running rotation. They're the ones that I go to on a regular basis. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Wishing you a better 2021. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.